Hello, beautiful people. Rebecca here, your Vibe Mentor, bringing you another Vibe Mentor's Frequency episode. Um, I am <laughs> in a funky kind of mood. It is 7 o'clock on a Saturday morning, which I usually don't work on the weekends. I'm not recommending it. But I am in the middle of a um, continued education course for brain spotting. And... <sighs> I just had to share <laughs> how freaking amazing this modality is. It is ridiculous. Um, and I'm making this more of, I'll probably do a separate video that's, you know, specific about uh, to brain spotting and, and make it more organized and professional. But this, I just wanted to share my experience. Um, I definitely will do something on brain spotting because it's, it's important to understand like all the techniques and stuff and why it works and fun stuff. But really why I'm popping in right now is because I wanted to share with you my experience and um, it requires that I be vulnerable and it requires that I show up authentically. And in doing that, there is always the fear collectively that we may somehow degrade our sense of authority or our um, respect in the industry that we oftentimes as coaches or um, a therapist or even content creators have this fear of like, if I am really truly authentic, if I tell you 100% of my story, then you may not see me as someone who can help you. And of course, the brain wants to connect that to survival and you won't make money and da 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 da, right? We're not going down that rabbit hole. So I preface that I'm prefacing this by saying that because I want you to understand that I am leading by example right now that when we show up as coaches, mentors, content creators, it really doesn't matter what your title is, when you show up, period, showing up in your full authenticity is putting you, you are, you are more of a leader by being honest and being authentic than by hiding your flaws. So I just want to say that. So know that as I go through this, that certainly is in the back of my mind, but that is that that is a, a fallacy and I'm not going to allow that to prevent me from sharing with you something that could really change your life. So all of that out of the way now. Um, I did not get ready to jump on here. I literally rolled out of bed at 3.30 this morning for this training. So um, pardon my fidgeting. Um, so I had this brain spotting session. This guy, um, Mark... Rixby, if I'm saying it correctly, um, amazing, beautiful, beautiful man, probably my new favorite person, although I have many favorite people. Don't be sad if you're um, <laughs> also one of my favorite people. Um, I just had a brain spotting session with him as part of our training. I volunteered. Um, one of my challenges has been being seen, right? So coming from a, a, a background of complex trauma, right? Having the the belief of not enoughness very early ingrained, like many of you have, like most of us collectively globally have, um, putting myself in front of a group of 50 people on Zoom um, was very, very difficult. And I knew it would be difficult and that's why I volunteered. I put myself intentionally in a position that I knew was gonna be max discomfort. And so essentially what brain spotting is, and I have to pull out my notebook so I say it correctly, but it is a brain-based body relational mind, mindfulness therapy, right? So brain-based, brain-body-based, right? So we're accessing the brain. We're also working with the body and it's relational. We're, we're being held in the resonance and presence of our therapist or, or Mark Grigsby in this case. And what we do is we use a wand to find the access point within the brain that allows the brain to access the memory. So the brain does not want you to see painful memories. Um, its job is to keep you safe. That means preventing you from feeling pain. Um, unfortunately, feeling pain is the way we heal it. So by finding this access point, um, for me, it's usually down and to the left, right? So when I find that access point and I hold my eyes on that point, I am allowing the optic nerve to access the limbic brain, which is, allows the body to pull up the trauma, the memory, and the feelings that need to be processed. So what happens when we experience trauma 
is that um, it's too much. It's system overwhelm, right? So if you've ever felt a feeling and you're like, holy shit, this is awful. I'm going to go distract myself. That's the moment that it happens where the, the hormones, the feelings are flooding the brain and the brain says too much, stop, push it down. The, the limbic brain is not capable of processing the massive amount of emotion that's coming up all at once. So it pushes it back down, which is fine temporarily if we take the time to process it later. Problem is societally, we're taught feelings are bad, don't show emotion, yada, 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 push, 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 push. So then the body's like overfilled and, and at dis-ease, right? So then we have dis-ease in the body. So brain spotting allows by accessing this, this trigger point visually, the, the optic nerve allows the brain to release some of that memory, to pull that up so that it can be processed in, in, in bite-sized chunks, if you will. So it's, it's in increments that are digestible for both the brain and the body. So enough of the science. I promised I said would save that for another video. I'm in this session with Mark. 50 people are watching, 44 to be exact. I like to have exact language. Um, of course, my birthday is 44, so <laughs> a perfect number. Um, I'm accessing this point. Luckily, it was down and to the left, which is pretty comfortable. I had to hold that for an hour. And at first, you know, the thought of like being in front of people, showing emotion, being vulnerable, being judged, being seen, all parts of the complex trauma wound. I don't like it. It's uncomfortable. I don't want to be there, especially for an hour, right? Um, but it's not, it wasn't. And I would say the beautiful part of doing this as a group is I, especially, and I'm sure most of you can relate. If you're following me, you're probably highly sensitive. You're probably highly empathic. Like we all are. We've probably experienced complex trauma. Those things are directly uh, connected. I felt like the intensity of close to 50 people watching me, right? My nervous system is shaking and I'm like, holy shit, I can't hold. I can't hold all of the focus, the energy, the intention that comes through, some of it good, some of it bad, right? And it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to just focus on the love of it. But man, there is in that moment of like, I'm accessing a traumatic memory and I'm feeling the intensity of all these people watching me. And it was like, there's this choice of like, I can, I can wither and I can play small and I can do all of this internally or I can show up for these people and I can process externally, showing my vulnerability, showing my weaknesses, but allow them to be healed in my process. And so it was like, a, a there was a moment of like, I don't know if I can handle this. So the nervous system shakes. It's it's a way for the, the nervous, system process, nervous system to process and release the trauma or, or the experience or the emotion, the energy, right? So energy in motion. So I don't know if they could see me shaking. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> My whole body felt like it was shaking. Um, and and I, I made the decision, right? I'm going to process externally. And so the core wound that I received as a child is you are bad, right? So I, I tell my story about the father who was a minister who taught us all about guilt, shame, fear, um, how we're awful sinners and we should grovel and, and hope for a place in heaven and that we don't go to hell, right? And so my core wound that I've been able to over many multiple sessions, not just this session today, I also see a therapist and do brain spotting regularly. Um, and I've understood to, you know, spot my triggers. Somebody said something or didn't say something, or I said something and they didn't hear me. And that triggered me. I felt that flare up of like anger or pain or nervous system, like fight or flight coming online. So then I look at the trigger and I say, okay, where does this come from? Why, why does that person disrespecting me trigger me? And then ultimately at the end of the day, it's because I feel like I'm bad right? If I were to distill it into two words, I am bad or three words. <laughs> I'm is one if you want to go that way. Um, and so I, I knew what I wanted to address with him. That's what I brought to the table, shared that story with everyone, which is scary in and of itself. That of course led to, okay, what happened in the teenage years, you know, abusive stepfather, leaving the house, living on my own, mom didn't come get me, things of that nature. All of this contributes to the hypervigilance that was created. So core wound, I'm bad, hypervigilance is coping mechanism or response. Um, and, and just walking through the process and I have to distill, you know, an hour long process into a 
10 or 15 minute video, but you know, there were shakes and there was intensity and it was like, I don't think I can hold this and handle this. And then you're, the beauty of this is like trusting the body. So what we do is we access the point in the brain that allows the optic nerve to access the limbic brain and relieve or, or release some of these old emotions and old feelings and bring up the, the, the messages that the parts of our body have for us. It's interesting. I'm kind of going into a little bit of the dizziness, which means some diso dissociation comes back. Um, so it's a, it's a long-term process. It's right. It's an onion. It's a, a layered thing that we're going to keep going into until it's completely desensitized. Um, I'm trying to recall where I was going with this. That in that moment, oh, there, there, the intensity. It feels like I can't handle it, and I. I have this thought of like, make it stop, right? It's got to stop. I want it to stop. And the body will naturally trusting the body, right? So we're going into the body and we're, we're focusing on the shaking. Um, I had sweaty palms. I had a tension in my throat and my shoulders where I hold a lot of my stress. My feet were cold. My hands were clenched. Um, so really being in the body and being with the feeling and just feeling like, oh, I can't handle this. I can't handle this. Right, and then the re resourcefulness of the mind will come in and say, okay, we can handle this, we've got this, it's all good, right? And so then your your body, your system will naturally regulate you. As long as you stay with it and stay in the feeling and in the body, you are processing and releasing it. If I said, I can't do this, let's stop, and I'm gonna go distract myself, I've stopped the releasing and the healing process. And so, the body naturally brought me back down, right? And we, we went into, okay, you're strong, we've survived, right? And so with the mind, for me, the the coping mechanism is hypervigilance, hypervigilance and over cognitive processing, right? So the brain wants to come in, but it's okay because it helps the system regulate. And so there was a lot of ebbing and flowing. And so I'll just say that and that'll pretty much sum up the next hour. There's a lot of ebbing and flowing and, um, it, it, you know, the system brings you up and it's really, really intense. And you're like, holy shit, I want to get out of here. And then it goes back down. You're like, oh, wow. New levels of peace and release and surrender and trust and faith and comfort in the body. And a knowing like, I am held and it's okay. And letting it go and letting it go and letting it go. And then say okay i'm here i'm good and then you'll kind of either the therapist will remind you of kind of what we're trying to process or or your body and mind will naturally bring you back there and you'll say but it's not safe it's not safe to let go it's not safe to surrender i have to i have to re i have to do stuff i have to always do stuff if i'm not working from 4 a.m to 4 p.m i haven't done enough right and so then that hyper vigilance kicks back in and i give her a name and her name is phoebe and Phoebe is just like the girl on Friends. She's kind of frenetic and she's all over the place and she's got to fix everything all the time, right? And so you notice you get back up into that hyperactivated state, right? And then the resourcefulness of the body comes back in and you say, where am I at? Where am I feeling this in my body? Oh, I feel the, the pressure in the brain and the tension and oh, even some pressure in my, my face and how I show up and how I'm seen is very important in the world and Right. And so you allow these things to come up and you continue to process them. And it came to a point where I finally got to, I can see that the belief that I am bad is still there, that the brain is holding on to that. Even though my cognitive processing brain says, I know that complex trauma causes me to think this. I know I am valuable and worthy simply because I breathe and every person on this planet has a purpose and they are perfectly and purpose perfectly and perfect for their purpose and every ounce of those rejected parts of me I'm too soft came up um, I have to it, when it was interesting he asked me so now when you think about not feeling like enough what comes up for you and after all of that processing and all of that feeling you would have thought that the level of intensity would have been really high but I looked at, I'm not enough. And because I'm not enough, it means I, I don't ask for what I'm worth. And I give away a lot of free sessions. 
And I work 12 hours a day to show up and to give and to give and to give and to give. And why, why do I hurt myself? Why do I not take care of myself? Why do I give away the farm? I literally am like dollar store pricing relative to the industry. And it came again to the surface that because I am bad and I thought, I cognitively know I am not bad. <laughs> like we've gone over this before. What are you not getting? And it's like the brain wanted to hold on to that so tightly. And I just sat with it and he said, how are you feeling? And I said, I felt cold. I felt hard and numb. And that's not who I am. That's not my core. That's, you know me, you, if you follow me, you've been here. I'm a lover. I love to give. I love to love on you and I love to have the freedom to be the lover that I'm built to be now because I have this platform and I connect with people and I love on them all day long and it's such a joy and such a blessing to see the healing and the impact and the power that that has and yet there's still a part of my brain that wanted to hold on to your bad and I sat with that and I said I'm confused I don't understand it doesn't make sense I don't even really feel anything. And I felt like in that moment I was failing the process. And he said, it's just perfect the way it is. Let it be. And I'm paraphrasing. It was more of my interpretation of what he said. But I sat with it and I let it be. I let it be confusing and I let it not make sense. And I let it be illogical. And trusting the body and trusting the process and trusting this whole sports car that we we drive, that it's there to hold me, that it's my friend, and that the healing process works. And I let go of the need to figure it out with my brain. The brain was the problem in that moment. The brain was not going to solve it. And trusting the body and the process allowed the answer to surface and even now with you know more dissociation and dizziness comes up trusting the healing process that brought me the message that the brain doesn't want to let go of this because that means it doesn't have it all figured out that means that my parent telling me i was bad gave me some sense of understanding and therefore power and control because I had it figured out that if by giving up that answer I'm bad meant that the brain no longer had control the brain no longer has it figured out that the brain had to accept that it's okay to not have it figured out and that's hard for a person who has the coping mechanism of hypervigilance the brain's always figuring it out. The brain's always fixing and doing, right? I work 12 hours a day. I do, 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 do to prove my value and worth. That by surrendering and releasing all the doing, all the fixing, the hypervigilance, and the having it figured out meant that the brain for a moment has to step into the question then what am I worth? The brain is a part of me, not the core me, not the higher self, not the conscious awareness, but the brain as a part of me had to let go of how it identified its value and worth for a moment. And of course this happened less than an hour ago. so. I'm very much in it and I wanted to do this while it was still fresh because it's so powerful and so beautiful that there is so much freedom and joy and peace, the stillness in that surrender. There's so much power in the nothingness. And if you take a minute, especially if you're hypersensitive or empathic, you can tune in to me right now. 
using the power of attunement and resonance, you can feel for just a moment what is available to you. The no amount of doing is going to help you find this place. This is the goal. This is what we were searching for. This is the work. It's so profound. That every ounce of your being is free. So much energy comes rushing back that you feel lightheaded. It's like you're lifting into new timelines, into new new dimensions, into new whatever, you know... Woo woo spiritual way out there term you want to use. And there's, I'm sure, biological scientific evidence of just the release, right? That your brain, here's a fascinating scientific statistic for you. Your brain, this tiny little piece of you that's a couple pounds relative to however big you are, uses 25% of your body's energy when it is in rest. It uses 60% of your body's energy when it is in stress. So from a scientific, purely grounded 3D perspective, you can say, I just gained back 30% of my energy. Whatever it does for us spiritually kind of doesn't matter. It's all cognitive processing. (laughs) In the just being there's freedom, there's support, there's peace. One really fascinating part of what happened in the session today was where his pointer happened to end up was on the bottom left of my screen. (laughs) I'll point to it here. Um, And it's right next to his name. I use Zoom. for all of these videos and we use zoom for that session and right next to his name it said mark gripsby i'm sure i'm saying it wrong sorry mark um parentheses team and everybody who works with him has parentheses team after their name so that you know who they are and it just so happened that his pointer was right on the word team and so i had to fixate <laughs> for an hour on the word team and <laughs> well, there's there's going to be processing for many days after you have these sessions. So um, it's part of the process. It is what it is. And so as I stared at that word team, so many things came up throughout the hour, you know, that my awareness would come back to that word. You know, in the beginning, it was I'm tired, I'm tired of doing it alone. I'm tired of carrying the weight of the world. I'm trying to do it all. I need a team. So in that moment, team meant, look at how alone you have been. And then over the course of the session, team began to mean new things. In that moment when it was intense for me to hold the energy of all these people staring at me, team meant I was supported by a team. And then later on in that session, the realization that I do it alone because I choose to. I chose the belief that people are not safe. I chose the belief that I had to do everything and do all the things to be good enough. I chose the belief that people were not safe and so it was better to isolate and not trust or count on anyone. It was better to do it on my own. It was a choice that I could have a team. And it was so beautiful because I I talk a lot about how we have to fill our airways with positive um, reinforcement, whether it's YouTube videos or affirmations or meditations or mantras. Um, And my mantra 
um, that I took from the old Lego movie. I don't know if anybody has kids anywhere from, I don't know. It was, it was an older movie. Just search it on YouTube. You'll find it like the song, everything is awesome from the, um, Lego movie. <laughs> the words are everything is awesome. When, wait a second. Everything is awesome. Everything is good when you're part of a team. Everything is awesome when you're living in a dream, right? So <laughs> there's team again, right? That I had been singing this and I would catch the word team and, and say to myself, I'm just encouraging myself to say everything is awesome, even though I don't really have a team. And I even said that in my mind, that I have been resistant to having a team came up today. Um, and even now in this moment, another realization, if any of my beautiful sisters and brothers who are part of the manifesting abundance through your life, perfect purpose accelerator, I need an acronym, man. <laughs> and the acronym isn't great either. So we'll, we'll figure that out. But if you're part of that Facebook group and you were part of the accelerator, we just did, we've decided to leave the group open. I usually close them so that I don't have something else to manage. And some beautiful sisters have stepped up and said, I would love to help you moderate and i closed that group and i you know in a way turned off the spigot for connection and family and support on a bi-monthly basis i was doing this regularly um full well knowing that you know it would be better to keep it open and having these beliefs that you know there's more motivate or there's more momentum when i open a new group and yada 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 i'm getting a little off track but there's team there and I didn't, it didn't even realize it's available to us guys. It's all around us. We don't see it. We don't claim it. We don't accept it. We don't receive it. And then finally, the most beautiful realization, I realize it's getting long, so I'll get off in a second here. Um, finally, at the end there where I realized the brain itself as a separate part of me wanting to hold on to this belief because that's how it identified the solution and felt in control and felt some sense of power over what is seemingly an overwhelming life. At least it believed that at that time when it developed that belief. When I finally articulated that, my heart literally leaped. It was like it did a, a flip. It was like, whoa, like this excitement, like, oh, <laughs> like finally the brain gets it, right? And it was in that moment it was like, the brain was relieved because the brain doesn't have to do all the work anymore. And the heart was relieved because the heart gets to have a say, like the body has been bracing for 43 years of my life, holding on, bracing for impact. Like what is the brain going to do to us next? Ah, right. And then to, to be able to finally relax, right? We're safe enough now that the brain doesn't have to, or the body doesn't have to brace for impact. The brain doesn't have to do all the work. The body is resourceful and has all of the capabilities of sustaining us and healing and assisting in making the decisions that the electromagnetic field of the heart is 10 times greater than the brain. Obviously, who's supposed to be in charge here? And at that moment, I realized there's an internal team that I have not been resourceful, although I've considered myself a very resourceful person, that I have not been using the resources available to me, allowing the body to heal and support. And at one point in the session, there was a, a feeling of uh, almost like a swaying or a rocking and kind of a throbbing, like when you, you hurt your finger and you feel that heartbeat, but it was more of a, a comfort, a, a very soft throbbing. Oh, and now in this moment, I'm realizing it likely was something that was in utero as far as a, a nurturing, supportive, resourceful, comforting thing. That's very interesting. There's more there. I'll have to process that at another time. Um, but my heart was throbbing. My heart was comforting me. My body was holding me. And the image of a, a mother holding a baby or a child came to mind. And I felt held. 
by my body, by my heart. And that it was safe to let all of these painful memories come up because I was held and I didn't have to fix it at the level of the mind. The mind is tired and it gives me headaches and shoulder aches and that I could surrender to the body and to whatever divinity that loves me and is supporting me in that moment. And that there is a peace in that I don't have to do it all. I don't have to do anything. It's amazing, you guys. There are no words. <laughs> Historically, I've used the word ecstasy. Like, if you just come to the other side, it's freaking amazing and awesome. And it is. That has not gone away. But there is an activation even in that. That now, when I find the middle way, it's just so right. And I don't have a lot more to say, <laughs> which is not necessarily conducive for a YouTube video or a Facebook post, however this is seen. Um, but there is such tremendous peace in the nothingness. You don't need words anymore. You don't need doing anymore. You don't need accomplishment anymore. We are meant to be held by our own bodies. by our own presence, by our own enoughness, by our brothers and sisters, by our collective human family. There are really, really big things on the horizon. Really big. The more of us that step into this, the more powerful we become the more kids that learn this early on, we are unstoppable. No amount of negative, evil entity or force or will, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Look at how long they've had to come up with all of these systems to suppress us and it still doesn't work. There is nothing that I didn't experience. They can't keep us down. The timer on my <laughs> Zoom call was 33.33 when I looked up, so I'm going to leave it there. Our benevolent father loves us. Father, mother, he, she, it, them, they, them, her, whatever. <laughs> you get what I'm trying to say? We are loved. We are held. Happy Earth Day, by the way. That was yesterday, but our mother holds us. Our father loves us. The beauty of the divine masculine and feminine are within us and all around us. Everything is truly awesome, you guys. On that note, if you would like assistance, if you would like to experience this unbelievable modality of brain spotting, you know where to find me. See you guys. Namaste. My mouse has been dying, so it's like, uh, I don't want to have to edit this. Oh, here we go. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs>